Hello Church family, this is Paul Delhero. Welcome to our continuing series on life's meaning and purpose here on living the Christian life. This week, we will be studying the book of Philippians chapter 1 verses 20 and 21. It says here, I eagerly expect and hope that I will in no way be ashamed, but will have sufficient courage so that now, as always, Christ will be magnified will be exalted in my body, whether by life or by death. For to me, to live is Christ, and to die is gain. Now, there are four simple things in this verse that I want us to focus on. The Christian life is personal, it is practical, it is possible, and it is permanent. But today, we will center our study on the first two on the list, and we will take on the next two next week. First of all, the Christian life is personal. It is personal because Paul said, to me, to live is Christ, and to die is gain. It is to me. That's personal. You see, every one of us begins the Christian life alone. We, you don't become a Christian by inheriting something from your parents. You don't become a Christian by hanging around other Christians and as a result catch it the same way you hang around with a person who's got the virus. You will probably catch the virus but you don't catch the Christian life that way. To be a Christian involves that at some point in your life you will have to make an intentional willful decision, a willful response to God. It is just like getting married. There comes a moment in time when you say, I do. And at that moment, something happens. Your relationship changes, your status changes. Now, we know that this took place in the Apostle Paul's life. We can read this in Acts chapter 9. The Apostle Paul was previously known as Saul of Tarsus, and he was the number one enemy of the Church of Jesus Christ. And Saul was intent on doing everything he could to put to a stop what he thought was this false movement of the followers of Jesus Christ. Saul was on his way to Damascus with the authority to arrest, to imprison, and even the authority to kill those Christians in that city. When suddenly a bright light shone from the sky and Saul of Tarsus fell to the ground and he heard the voice speaking out of the light calling him by name, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? And Saul answered, Who are you, Lord? And to his amazement and shock, the answer came back, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. Before this incident, Saul has been convinced that Jesus was a fraud. He tells us in Philippians chapter 3 that, he was intent on destroying the church of Jesus Christ because he was totally committed to the Mosaic law, the law God had given Moses. You see, Saul had heard stories about Jesus being crucified, stories about the empty tomb, but he believed the popular rumor that went around at the time that the disciples came and stole the body of Jesus on the third morning and hid it. Matthew chapter 28 tells us that this story gained circulation because the Roman soldiers who were protecting the tomb were bribed to say that they fell asleep and that the disciples stole the body. And Saul of Tarsus believed the story and to him Jesus is dead. And that the story that Jesus is alive to him was a big fraud. But to his utter amazement, the voice said, I am Jesus. The Apostle Paul discovered two things that day that transformed his life. Two things that each one of us should also discover. The first thing he discovered is that Jesus is alive. My friends, Christians are not following the teachings of a dead Jesus. And the second thing he discovered is that Jesus could transform his life. Saul asked, what do you want me to do? And Jesus gave him an agenda for the rest of his life. The point is this. Saul bowed down on his knees and asked, What do you want me to do? 
and Saul of Tarsus was never the same again. My friends, there has to come a moment in your life and mine when you say, Lord, take over my life. And you make that surrender because He is alive and willing to live His life in you, work through you and accomplishes His plan through you. You may have been going to church for many years, but unless you come to a point when you say, please, Lord Jesus, take over my life, you are not a Christian. You may be religious, but you are not a Christian. You may have grown up in a Christian home. You may be God-fearing, but there has to come a moment as it came in the life of the Apostle Paul when the Christian life became personal. When you come as a sinner to Jesus and discovers that He loves sinners, He specializes in cleaning them up and transforming them, making them into new people. My friends, the Christian life is personal. Secondly, the Christian life is practical. It's practical because Jesus, because Paul said, for me to live is Christ. It's about living. We don't want to just exist and go through some boring routines. Yes, there are routines in life, but we need reason, not routines. And Paul says, there is a goal, a reason to life. As we studied last week, there are many people who do not have a reason for living. They just exist until they can't bear it any longer. Other times, they just fill their lives with emptiness, with meaningless pursuits. But Paul says, I've got the reason to live. And that reason is Jesus Christ. Let's go back to Philippians 1 verse 20. And I will explain what it means. It says there that Christ will be exalted in my body, whether in my life or in my death. Paul says, I have a goal in life, and that is that Christ will be exalted in my body. Now, let's focus on the word exalted. What does that mean? The King James translation of the same verse reads, that Christ might be magnified in my body. Now, what do you mean to magnify? If you know what a magnifying glass is, you would know the answer. The primary purpose of the magnifying glass is to make things big or to bring things to focus. Now, says the Apostle Paul, my goal is whether by my life or by my death, that I might magnify God. Paul is saying that his reason for living is to exhibit Jesus, to put Jesus on display in his life, that those prison guards who are chained, chained to him every day will see Jesus in him, that those prison helpers who delivers his food every day might see Jesus in him, that his cellmates who are chained next to him or those who are near to him might see Jesus in him, that those fellow Christians who come to visit him in his prison cell in Rome, in visiting him, might see Jesus in him, that Jesus Christ might be magnified in a new way, that his soul magnifies Christ. And if he dies, his goal is to bring Christ into focus. What a reason for living. This is the reason the goal for every Christian, that our lives become a showcase of Christ, that Christ will be put on display in our lives. You see, the only Jesus that unbelievers will ever see on this earth is the one reflected in those who already knew him. Our reason, our goal, our purpose is that our lives will become a showcase of Christ that Christ will be, will be put on display in our lives, that our lives become a revelation of Christ. That is our reason for living. Now, another word we can, lose, uh, we can use in lieu of exalted or magnified is this, that Christ will be glorified in my body. My friends, I truly believe that to glorify, honoring God is the best word we can use to describe our purpose. 
you and I were created for the purpose of glorifying God, even in the most mundane activities of life, such as eating and drinking. You and I are to flee from sexual immorality. You and I are to walk worthy of our calling so that the name of our Lord Jesus may be glorified. That's in 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 12. My friends, glorifying God is an enormous privilege and awesome responsibility. When others see God's character on display in our lives, it reminds them of His power, goodness, and grace. But when we claim ourselves to be Christians and our behavior, our character does not exalt, does not honor, and does not glorify God, God is dishonored and His character called into question. Fellow believers, let us make it our purpose to aim our lives at God's glory. Make it the standard by which we evaluate everything that we do. Always ask the question, is this thing that I'm doing, does it honor God? Is this thing that I'm thinking, does it glorify God? My friends, the supreme purpose in life for any man or woman, for anyone who has ever been born into this world, is to glorify God. That is what living is all about. Glorifying God is the end result of the Christian life. And spiritual maturity is simply concentrating and focusing on the person of God until we are caught up in His majesty and His glory. Let us pray. Lord, we realize how awesome our responsibility is as your followers, as believers. We ask that you show us any area of our lives that do not honor you. Oh, far from it, Lord, that you be dishonored, that your character be called into question because of our behavior, because of our actions, Lord. We ask your Holy Spirit to point to us these areas of our lives. And we are grateful to you, Lord, for the privilege of, of honoring you, of glorifying you in our lives. We pray that others, especially the unbelievers, that they may see your character on display in our lives, reminding them of your power, your amazing love, your goodness, and your grace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for joining us today, family. See you next week. Always remember, live your life to the glory of God.